Hi, welcome to Point of Care Ultrasound Geek. My name is Jared Marks, and if you have any questions about this or any of the other lectures on this channel, or just general ultrasound questions, you can feel free to reach out to me at pocusgeek at gmail.com, or you can comment in the comments below, and I try to respond to those. Today we're going to talk about lower extremity DVT ultrasound and how to perform this study. I think it's a pretty straightforward study uh, and should be in the wheelhouse of most of us. This is not meant to define the standard of care, but instead is uh, an educational experience hopefully for you as a provider and how you can use point of care ultrasound at the bedside to evaluate for DVTs. This is a revision of a previous video I did on here and hopefully has some better graphics and videos to further clarify how to do this study. Indications are simple. If you have a patient where you're concerned about a DVT or, and or a PE and you're trying to avoid a CT of the chest, you can do this ultrasound. This is a proximal leg ultrasound only, but it is um, can definitely be incorporated with clinical decision rules and is safe and effective in diagnosing or ruling out uh, DVT in our patients. So if you've watched some of the prior videos, uh, you're aware of the binary questions I always address. And this ultrasound, um, our binary questions are pretty simple. And essentially what you want to know is, are the deep vein structures compressible? And what that means is, does the anterior wall and the posterior wall touch when you put compression upon or pressure upon them? And we look at these different areas. I'll let you read through those. Um, but we look at these different areas and evaluate them to see if that is possible. If a clot's present, the wall should not touch, and that should be your first indication of that. Now, there is some literature out there to say that you could do what people have said, two-point ultrasound. Two-point ultrasound, um, I think, is a misnomer. What we really have to discuss is that you need to have a two-area ultrasound. Um, and that, need, that needs to include the area around the saphenous junction with the, the femoral vein and or the, pop, and the popliteal vein. Um, when I teach this to my residents and when I do this myself, I evaluate from the common femoral vein all the way down to the popliteal vein, you, uh, actually to the popliteal trifurcation using compression. I don't think it adds that much time to your ultrasound to do this. Once again, I'm not saying what is right or wrong. That's just what I prefer to do in my practice, and that's how we're going to review it today in this video. Real quick, we're just going to look at the anatomy. We've zoomed in on the area of the saphenous vein just to see that junction. And the reminder is that the saphenous vein, and the reason why I've done this is the saphenous vein helps you um, locate yourself along the venous system, and it allows you to... Uh, for a better term, orient yourself along that venous system and what you should be seeing. So that's what I always look for first. And keep in mind that that takes off medial on the patient. And so when we look at our, when we orient ourselves, we want to see that and come off uh, towards them medially. And that will change on your orientation on the screen, whether it's the right or left leg. When we uh, position our patients, now we want to put them in a supine position and I would recommend lowering the head of the bed down so they are completely supine. Here um, we have many obese patients and sometimes the abdomen uh, will hang over the inguinal area and it will be hard to get up high enough to evaluate that area. So lay them flat, get their back stretched out so that you can get up into that area and really evaluate where you need to. Don't compromise um, looking at the area correctly just because you're having them sitting up. Additionally, you want to have them bend their knee and bend it, their leg out externally, rotate that, put them in a frog leg position. Uh, a couple other recommendations that you can do is you can put them in a reverse Trendelenburg. This will make the veins more plethoric and easier to see. And then you, what you want to do is you want to use a high frequency linear probe and you're going to place it right up near the inguinal uh, ligament, inguinal canal. And what we're going to see is we're going to see a structure like this. Now we are doing some compression here and we'll talk about that in a second. But what you see is that the we want our probe marker and our screen indicator or uh, probe indicator to be directed to the same side. So if your probe marker is on the left, 
This is going to be directed towards the patient's right. And it doesn't matter which leg you do, you want it directed the same way. And this is simply to help you that if you decide to move your probe this way, that on the image it will also go to the right. If you don't have them directed the same way, it will confuse you because it will actually slide the opposite. So make sure that your probe and the probe, uh, the probe marker and the probe indicator are directed the same way as if you were holding your probe right above the screen that you're looking at. So in this image, we have the probe indicator towards the patient's right. And so what we do see is that this is her right, which that makes sense because that would mean that this is lateral and this is medial on a left leg. And so our vein is here and our artery is there. All right. So keep that in mind as we go through this. Now, the image, if we did a right leg, would be essentially the same image, but it would be flipped over 180 degrees um, and this orientation. But we'd still want to make sure that our probe marker is the right way so that when we move on the patient, it's correct. So like I said before, I like to look for the saphenous junction first. And what we're going to do here is here's an artery. This is your femoral artery. And here's your femoral, as the deep femoral artery. Now these have bifurcated um, at that level or near it. You won't always see them having bifurcated when you see the saphenous vein, but you may, or they may have been bifurcated for a little bit. But what we see here is the two arteries and then we see the common femoral vein right here. And then we see this branch that's coming into it. And this is the saphenous vein which is dumping in there. Now keep in mind the saphenous vein is a superficial vein, but if there is a clot here, we'd be definitely concerned because it's draining right into the deep system. There's a valve that's right here that protects the lower pressure system of the superficial veins from the uh, higher pressure of the deep femoral vein or the deep veins. And so you can get prone to have clots develop here which will enter into the deep system. So that's why we want to evaluate this area. Now, what we want to do is we want to see this anterior wall right here, kiss or touch this posterior wall when we collapse it. We also want to be able to see that this area here, uh, we control the probe as we go in and that we can compress that as well. So let's watch the video here and we can see that compressed there. And you want to do a nice controlled compression, make sure that you're staying on that spot. Now, if you look at that vein in this video, you'll see, and I, it's hard for me to put that line on there. Uh, let's do it with this right here. You're going to see a little flicker of a hyperlucent structure. That's just a valve. Um, that's nothing to worry about. That's not a sign of a clot. And a lot of clots you will see, you'll be able to see that they are, have some ectogenicity and others may not. Just if you cannot compress it, then you need to be concerned that a clot's there. Now, if they've had prior DVTs, they could it could be a chronic DVT or it could be scarring of the vascular wall. And um, that becomes a little more complicated, but there's some type of clot still sitting there. Um, if they've never had a DVT and you find that you're not uh, able to compress it, but you don't see the clot, that means there is a clot there. There's something obscuring that. So from the saphenous junction, I like to move my probe uh, superior and we're going to end up finding our common femoral vein. So when we look at the common femoral vein, um, we can see our artery there again, which is right here. And here's our vein. Okay. And remember that this is lateral and this is medial because we're doing the left leg. And so when we compress here, we're just going to make sure that those uh, two walls touch, which they do again. And you can see again, there's a valve right there, right at the junction we're seeing. It's just flickering in the, in the vein, and that's normal. Uh, don't worry about that at all. Now, after we've gotten this view, then I'm gonna we're going to start dragging down. And the next area I look for is this. This is a pretty common... Uh, deep vein that takes off of the common femoral vein. You don't always, I don't see it 100% of the time, 
but it's right there. I look at, personally, I look at any time there is a vein coming off the deep system, I compress at that area um, simply to make sure that there's no clots coming from those deeper systems. And what we see here is, uh, if you look at the drawing up in the right hand corner, you can see that the artery is separated into the superficial femoral artery and the deep femoral artery. And the common femoral vein has this uh, branch coming off of it um, that goes towards the lateral leg, uh, more up towards the uh, femoral head. And I like to compress this area, make sure that it's nice and compressible. You are in a long axis on this view of that um, junction. So be careful that you push in controlled and that you can tell whether those walls are touching or not. Make sure you're not sliding off of it um, there. Now, keep in mind that all of these structures are happening within a matter of centimeters to each other. And that's why when we talk about a two point compression, it's probably more of a two point or two area compression when we talk about the saftness area, because we want to evaluate these other structures. And, what we're going to see in this video, this one's a little harder um, to see initially because the deep femoral vein as it comes off disappears pretty quickly. But I want you to pay attention that right here there's a little structure that's going to develop. And it's going to be a vein that comes off the deep femoral vein. Now we see our deep, our common femoral veins right here. And then we have this branch that comes off that we already saw in the last video. But we're going to have another one come off right here. And we want to make sure that that compresses also. So we're going to watch those walls, or this is just a video to show it. So right here at the end, we can see, let me get rid of those from the previous. We can see this vein right there. And that's your deep femoral vein. Here's your common femoral vein right there. And we want to make sure that those can both compress and that the walls touch. And let's go ahead and see if that will play here. Notice that the one, so the femoral veins on top and then you've got your deep vein there compressing and they're right there together. So let's take this over so we don't, can't draw on the video, but there's our deep femoral and now it's collapsed and then our superficial femoral vein or what we also call the femoral vein right there. So we're gonna see first this one collapse, and then the second one collapse. We have our artery, and then bring, this brings in the deep femoral artery, and we're not gonna be able to collapse those, or should not be able to. We're gonna see the same thing here. So as we continue down the leg and get more distal, we are scanning along the femoral vein. It's also known as the superficial femoral vein, but we don't want to get that confused for a superficial vessel. So I typically just refer to it as a femoral vein when I'm talking with my residents and staff, simply because uh, we want to reemphasize that this is a deep vein. And so right here we have the femoral vein. We can see the superficial femoral artery. And right here we see the deep femoral vein. You won't always see this continue, um, but if you do, then make sure it's compressible. Now, the femoral vein, as you move distally, will can be anywhere from right medial to it, to it can swing down below or posterior to the artery, and I've even seen it swing and come out laterally. If you're dragging down, you can watch the course of this and make sure that you know which vessel is which. If you're struggling to know, you can put some uh, pulse wave Doppler on it and verify if it's got a venous or an arterial flow. Um, but if the anatomy is right, the anatomy is right. And here we can see that this vein is coming deep or posterior to that artery. And we're going to pay attention to both structures. That one collapses and this one collapses here. You can see that one collapses also. And I will do this. I'll compress about every two centimeters from the femoral vein all the way down till I hit the adductor canal. At the adductor canal, it becomes uh, difficult to visualize it because it's diving posterior to enter the popliteal fossa. But this is an example of it at the very end. We can see the vein here, artery here. Here's some muscle. It's starting to hit the adductor canal. And we just need to make sure it's compressible. So it's nice. this vein's nice and compressible. And, and like I said, I look about every two centimeters and compress, but I'm watching the course of the vein as I go. This is one of those applications that I actually do put some gel directly on the patient, 
following that path so I can watch the vein as I go along. After we've jumped to the adductor canal, we are going to put the probe on the back of the patient's knee. There's a couple ways to do this. You can leave them in the frog leg position. Sometimes they're not able to bend their knee well enough to get back there. Um, and I'll hold their leg, their distal leg, and put it underneath. Um, I've had them roll over and be prone. If you do that, keep in mind that when they straighten their leg, it collapses the portal vein or the popliteal vein. And so you may want to lift their lower leg up, put some towels or something under their foot so you can appreciate the popliteal vein. And I'd also recommend if you're doing that type of technique to use a um, reverse Trendelenburg position. What we're going to see here though is um, this is our popliteal vein right here. And here's our popliteal artery. Now we've got to keep in mind that we are we have the probe in the back of the on the back of the leg, and so this is posterior, and this is anterior. And I'm not going to write it all the way out, but that's so the vein is posterior. But because we're touching the back of the le patient's leg, the vein is going to be on top on our screen in comparison to the artery. And you need to make sure that this anatomy is correct. I've seen individuals collapse the artery when the vein has a clot in it and not recognize it. So you need to make sure you recognize the anatomy. If you're struggling with that anatomy, remember you can use pulse wave Doppler to verify what type of vessel it is. So let's see if that is compressible. You can see that vein nice and compressible and the artery is right here and it's not. Now, when you're compressing, when you're looking for this view, sometimes you've got to put a little pressure on the back of the leg in order to get down, uh, to get the view initially. And um, I always like to make sure that I am underneath, or uh, it's actually lateral to the semitendinosus tendon. Otherwise, you'll be on that tendon and you'll try to compress, and you won't be able to compress simply because you can't put enough pressure against that very tight tendon. So make sure you can do that. Now lastly, I like to visualize the popliteal trifurcation. In proximal leg ultrasound, we don't follow the veins of the calf to look for DVT. There's a lot of controversy of whether we should be even treating those, whether we should be doing whole leg ultrasound. Um, a lot of the decision rules were based off of proximal leg ultrasound. And at least from the guidelines uh, for emergency medicine, they rec it's only down to the popliteal fossa or to the popliteal vein. I like to look at the trifurcation just to make sure I've made it as distal as I can and I will compress these vessels. And what you're going to see here is that the vein once again is right here and it's just going to separate into three. It will s separate into a trunk and then usually uh, have two come off of it. It may separate all at once like this one does. I just follow it till I see all three branches simply to make sure I've made it to the distal portion of the popliteal vein. And we see a video like this. So this won't show compression, but you can see the three separate vessels. One's coming off this way, one's coming anterior, and then this one's going to stay near the artery. And I will usually follow them down and put a little compression on them to make sure that there's no clot in them proximally. But in point of care ultrasound or bedside ultrasound, or clinical ultrasound, we do not scan the entire leg. Typically, maybe at your institution you have those uh, protocols, um, but I would refer to those. But most of our decision rules are based off of proximal leg ultrasound, which is from the knee to the groin area. And that's where most of the decision rules have been made. And um, you know that, that will depend on your local, um, your local practice. So I hope that you found that helpful at all. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment below or email me again at pocusgeek at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe um, as we come out with more videos and answer any questions that um, are sent to me. I hope you can find, you'll find those useful. Um, thanks for watching.